Hello and welcome to today's ServiceNow Express Forms video blog post on the topic of business rules. Today we're going to be looking in the system at how to configure business rules, what we can do with business rules, and some of the terminology related to that topic. So I'm going to dive right into the platform as a system administrator in the ServiceNow Express instance here. And let's navigate to our business rules by searching it in the upper left navigator. I can bring up my list of business rules and most likely you'll have a small list of items that are built out by default in your Express instance. So let's look at creating two different types of business rules. One that provides a message useful for items such as confirmation screens and the second being some automated logic to fill out a form. So let's look at that first case for business rules the fact that we can use it to dynamically send messages. So maybe I'm gonna make this one anytime an incident is submitted let's turn it let's say incident submission example. I'm gonna run this on the incident table so the first thing you pick is what table does this business rule apply to? So really that's saying what records when either incident or updated are we going to be applying some automated logic to? So in this case it's going to be my incident records on the incident table. So the first thing we select is when to run this business rule and I'll note that there's two main selections an insert or an update. So an insert is when the record is first created within the ServiceNow system, such as if you have a record producer in your system and it's the item that's first creating that record, that's when an insert's gonna run. However, any time after that first creation, when a user changes a field or makes any updates to that record by right-click pressing save or by pressing that update button, that'll count as an update and the business rule will trigger for updates. So insert really a one time on creation and update running every time a change occurs to the form. So the first thing we'll select as well is our filter conditions. This is where you choose when to run this rule. So in our case, you know, maybe we want to do some business rules for auto routing or for a confirmation screen. So the first item I'll look at is that confirmation screen. And the second one we'll look at is how we can do that automatic form changes based off of selections. So let's begin by maybe doing a parsing of our short description. And let's just say anytime the short description contains the word and let's just say password. So I'm gonna say anytime this runs on an inserted record, I'm gonna go ahead and do the action of add message here. So I'll note that you can also set the field values to whatever you'd like to and set that add that additional HTML message here. So anytime maybe my short description contains password, I'm gonna go ahead and change the priority field of my ticket automatically to high because anything password related for my business, we're gonna designate as a high priority incident. Additionally, let's add our own personalized message here for this incident in our system. So maybe we want to say, hi, your password incident has been received and has been given the pri uh, high priority. Please contact us through the ticket below or through email notifications. So you really could set up these messages that you send out with whatever HTML content you'd like to, you know. So if we wanted to come into the system, if we wanted to look at maybe an HTML code example that we want to plug in there, that's definitely something you can do. But for now, let's just do a simple message here and let's have our field value set priority high. So I'm going to also make this message dynamic. We can see hi and I want to pick maybe the caller, the user who opened this ticket. I simply press caller from my variables here and now I've added a dynamic element into my message. So hi caller, your password has been received with high priority. So I'm going to go ahead now and after we established when to run this, what table to run this and then what actions to take. So I'll submit that in our system and let's take a look now 
how that looks. So I'm going to go in as Joe Employee, and let's go ahead and do our standard submission of an incident through the self-service catalog. So maybe I'm going to say this is password issue with my uh, AD account, maybe. So I'm going to go ahead and press submit, and we can see just like that, I've opened up automatically my message here that I dictated in that business rule. So hi, Joe employee, his name dynamically pulled. Your password has been received and has been given high priority. If we look down below at the activity log, we could see that the priority of that incident that came in is automatically switched to too high. So these business rules are great for adding in any kind of messages you'd like, as well as doing those form changes. So the second example for the kind of business rule we can create, and let me head back in the system as a system administrator, is automated form populations or changes. So for that same incident, maybe for that same business rule, where we went ahead and we created that password message. Maybe we want to make another one business rule, or we can use business rules for form populations automatically. So let's say we want to populate the location of where our caller's from on the form. So let's just do this and let's we'll name it auto location population. So if you want to automatically, you know, get data in your form, that's also what business rules are used for. So let's say we want to run this on the incident table as well, or just to switch things up, you know, maybe we want to do this on problem. When to run, we'll always have it run on an insert or an update and let's have it run when the caller field or when the open by field is not empty. So to make sure that we've got data in the system. The actions we're then going to take is why don't we set the location field on our form and make it the same as the location on our user. So you could see here when I went to show related fields, this lets us automatically reference the other selections and references we already have on that form. So in this case, you know, open by, I can drill into those open by user fields, and why don't I set the location of this problem to be the same as the location of my user who opened this ticket. So I'm going to go ahead and make that change and press submit. So now when I head over into the problem form, in my system here, let's take a look at open problems. I can go ahead, let's add maybe a location onto there. So let's add the location field to see this business rule in action. And when I run it now, we'll see that the location field automatically populates with that caller of the ticket when anytime it's created now on the form. So you know what, let's just do a default update or change. And when I update that in the system, and look at that same problem we have, we could see that the location now has been dynamically pulled automatically and populated based off the user who opened up this problem in the system. So all this automation in terms of either messages or in terms of automatically populating form fields or switching form fields are available to you through business rules on insert or update of any record on any table and service now. I hope this session has been helpful in gathering ideas on how you can use business rules and please leave any comments, questions or future topic requests in the comments section below.